The Polar Plunge, how did it start? It's a signature fundraising event for Special Olympics. And it started um, many years ago here in Ohio, uh, specifically the Mosquito Lake Polar Plunge uh, started nine years ago. This is the ninth anniversary of the Polar Plunge. It's very important because the Polar Plunge uh, supports Special Olympics Ohio's efforts to provide sports training and competition events for over 23,000 athletes in the state of Ohio who have intellectual disabilities. And it's our largest fundraiser of the year. It's a great way to get involved and to support Special Olympics. The Polar Plunge is important to support because uh, your friends and neighbors and family members are jumping into really cold water in the middle of January. So why wouldn't you want to support them? The Polar Plunge uh, benefits Special Olympics by raising money. All of the proceeds from the Mosquito Lake Polar Plunge, as well as the eight others in the state of Ohio from January through March, all of those proceeds go to support the training and competition activities that Special Olympics Ohio provides for more than 23,000 athletes in the state of Ohio who have intellectual disabilities. The Polar Plunge will benefit uh, people as a whole, the community, the state, by providing these opportunities for athletes who have intellectual disabilities to learn about sports, to learn the rules of the game, whatever their sport may be, to be on the playing field and to demonstrate their activities, to demonstrate their achievements in the eyes of their families and their communities. Depending upon the location, there's um, a few expenses that we do incur, but we're also really fortunate that a lot of um, our resources are able to help us out with those expenses or maybe even donate and give us in-kind support. We have to put up some tents by Mosquito Lake for the day of the event. We have heated changing tents for both, of course, the men and the women on site because when you get out of the water, you want to get out of those wet, cold clothes as quickly as possible. We have to um, provide any kind of safety and uh, you know, support measures like that. So we have uh, the fire department and police on site. We have EMS on site in case anything might go awry. Um, and a lot of times, like I said, community agencies and places like that will help us out by donating their services. We're also very fortunate that we have a partnership with the Moose Lodge in Cortland, and they provide the location where we have our pre-registration event the night before the plunge, and they uh, have the after party as well, the day of the plunge. So as far as expenses go, um, it's, it's not too bad. We're very fortunate in that as a nonprofit and as a fundraiser, we're able to leverage a lot of relationships to, to make things work so that our expenses stay low and any of the proceeds from the event can go to support our mission, which is our athletes. It really depends on the location in terms of how much money is raised by each polar plunge, but I can tell you as I pull up my figures from last year that the Mosquito Lake <laughs> the Mosquito Lake Polar Plunge raised just under $22,000. And uh, we had about 120 people go into the water. Of course, this year we'd really like those numbers to go up as we would every year. So definitely keep, keep registering. But um, overall, the nine polar plunges in the state of Ohio in 2014 raised over $416,000. Depending on the location, anywhere from 50 to 800. It did, the polar plunge became popular all over the country basically because there are a lot of people who I guess really want to know what it's like to go into the cold, cold water in the winter. It's a very popular event, as you said. And um, also, of course, because of the support of Special Olympics through the event, that's another reason that people really are drawn to it and want to support it and keep it going. To prepare for a polar plunge, there are a lot of things that need to be done, of course. We start usually in August or September, making sure that all of our sites are secured and that you know everybody knows that we'll be coming that day and having an event. And then we begin the process of putting up all of the registration websites 
which you can find at SOOH.org. If you go there, you can find your particular plunge and link right to it to get yourself signed up. Um, we also have to go sometimes to the different locations to scout out where exactly things will be, where we'll put the tents, where we will um, actually go into the water, things like that. And then as we get closer to the plunge, we have to make sure that, of course, we have people signed up for it, that we have all of the t-shirts ordered, all of the incentive prizes for those who raise a lot of money. We offer different levels of incentive prizes, anywhere from um, really nice uh, winter jackets to different uh, branded hats and things. Um, so we have to order all of that and first design it, of course. And then once we get closer to the plunge the day before, we have to coordinate with local people to sometimes cut through the ice, say, in Mosquito Lake. I know last year your fire department was really helpful. They were out with chainsaws and different tools early in the morning cutting a hole in the ice so that there was actually a place to go in the water.